Brenda. And today I am working on putting some linseed oil on um, the set of single horse shafts that Jim made and you might have seen in earlier videos. Jim is going to be heading down the road um, with the team and he's going to spread a load of manure and he's going to bring back with him the pole for the scoot and he's going to have to explain all that to you. But come on along with us today and uh, we're looking forward to a new adventure. So this is just some linseed oil I had sitting around and uh, figured we could use old motor oil or use this. It's a little thick, but it'll do the trick. It's going to help preserve this wood. So this will help preserve it for a long time. Jim's about ready to head down with Lady and Bill. I want to show you the back of our manure spreader. I don't know if you ever remember seeing it before, but it looks beautiful compared to what it was. We spent a morning cutting off old pieces of baler twine that were wrapped around here and stuck on manure and everything. It was quite a job. Um, but it looks so much better. I think it works so much better. We've used it since then and the manure really seemed to fly. It does. It's um, important to keep the, the beaters and everything cleaned off. It keeps it running so much better. And then Jim oiled it all up and and uh, it just needed a little overhaul and it got it. A messy, dirty job, but a rewarding job. I was telling the girls about it and they didn't think that would be a fun job, but I kind of thought it was fun. I didn't mind it at all. It rained a lot last night, so the manure once again is very sloppy and wet. Where, where he collects the manure or pushes it until he um, spreads it, it, it gets wet in there. So it is sloppy. We're heading down to the lower farm, to the 12 acre piece we have down, way down below. And so the horses are gonna get a little exercise going down there. I'm gonna ride along with Jim. If you remember from a previous video, Lady was not very thrilled by the sheep. Jim's gonna see what she thinks today. He purposely veered her over to that side of the road so she could look at him and get used to them. Thankfully, we live on a very quiet road and we can see both ways a long, a long ways away. No cars are coming. Didn't seem to really bother her a bit. She's going to give me a ride. A little wet down here. This is unbelievable though compared to what it used to be. This was not a field at all when we started and Jim had some excavation work down here and it was just a swamp. I mean it's really wet right now as you can see but in the summer we can hay this and it makes beautiful um, reed canary grass in here and a beautiful crop. Um, I wish I had some pictures of what it used to be like because what a difference now. But as you can see, we got a lot of rain. So over there is where, this is where Jim was logging last winter. And there's still a little bit of wood left over here, firewood, but he's getting that pole that he needs from back here that fits into the scoop. Hard hack.
That's hard hack, right? Yes. And I've been like moving some poles recently and that is some really hard wood. Really is amazing. That's why of course it's used. The noise you're hearing in the background is the edger in the sawmill. Brenda's actually in running the edger. She's run the edger quite a bit for me and uh, she's pretty good at it. Sometime I'll have to take a video of her edging lumber for me. Okay, here we are at the scoot and I am going to show you a few things. Uh, I apologize our new audio that we bought. We're having some troubles with it. So I'm back to just using the audio on the GoPro and so I hope I can be heard good. So what I have on the scoot is a short pole, which is not really the norm. Normally you have a long pole on this and so I actually went down and got the long pole as you saw and I'm going to put that on. So. I'm going to get the skid steer to, to lift one side of the scoot up so I can get underneath it to do what I need to do and I'll try to explain the what's and how's of what I'm doing. Okay so I brought the skid steer over and I just picked one runner up so that I can get underneath here. So you can see I've got a bolt through this short hitch that I have for the horses and I want to take that out. I have shown you a lot of videos of myself hitching on to this sled with my cart and because of that and the way I have it set up is I would hitch on put the pin through the hole but I can't if I was to pull off this it's not pulling anything except for on that bolt on that center front bunk center of the front bunk so that's not a way to pull so I have to be able to pull off of these chains right here so when I use the cart I would just run a chain through here and hitch it to the cart and so I'd be pulling off this and the tongue would be for holding back purposes. I put a pin in there because sometimes when you hitch on I didn't want the horses to pull ahead and pull this whole tongue out of the hole because 
then it's hard to get back in. So by having a pin there, it, if they do pull ahead, it would keep it in place. So now I'm gonna take this tong out of here. So now we have, as you can see, the big ring that the tongue will go through, either one of the tongues, the long one or the short one. And on, on the back, now you can see this ring here, and that's where the tongue goes into. And with the short tongue, I put that through and I put a bolt in it. But for my long tongue, you'll see that I don't have a bolt. I just um, shaved the wood so it would stop at that point. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Now I just need to get my, my evener on here and my neck yoke and I can hitch the horses up and go for a ride. Um, I've had quite a few videos that I've used the scoot in mostly in logging and this has steel bunks across there which is what I put my logs on. For the summer months I like to just put on that those 2x6s or 2x8s whatever just a little platform just to use for a work sled for numerous different things. As you've seen me, I actually go out and fix fence with it and, and exercise the colts with it even. So, uh, but if you wanted to learn more about this scoot, if you went back to some of my older videos, it explains a lot of the different ways and the different troubles I've had with it and, and how how I've been able to make it work. So let's get a neck yoke and evener on and hitch the horses up and see if it's set up right. Test that. Here you can clearly see how I'm pulling off these two chains that are going to each individual runner. And the tongue itself is just for turning purposes. The way this scoot is set up, when you're turning a corner like this, the tongue of course helps turn it, but it's so long it makes it hard to just go that way. But the, with the chains on these runners the way they are, especially when you don't have a body on it um, and you just have the bunks, but it's allowed to let one of the runners slide ahead of the other and actually will help turn it because you're pulling on the runner, not just trying to turn from side to side with the pole. I was asked recently in one of the comments on how to get horses back into shape after they haven't worked for a long time. And by using a sled like this and just exercising them is a really good way to get their muscles built back up again. When I'm slow on work on the farm, I will quite often take the horses and hitch them onto the scoot and either go up and down the road with it or around around the field just to, just to get their muscles either kept in shape or build them back up again. And the amount of colts that I've trained on this sled is, I don't know how many it's been, but there's been a lot of animals I've trained pulling this sled and it works really good. Here you can see the cows and the horses. I have the Pertrons out here and the Suffolk Punch colts out here all enjoying their new pasture. And here's Duke coming up to him. see Lady, I guess.
Always very inquisitive, these colts are. All right, tap it down. Okay, that's it for today's video. I hope you have a great day. See you next time.